And then went to go into the museum and <laughs> there was a huge line. Welcome back to my channel. I know I missed another video upload last week, but I'm back this week with a new video about my life here in Qatar as usual. And I'm also happy to report that the exam that I was studying for the past few weeks and the reason I wasn't uploading, uh, the exam went well and I'm really happy to not be worrying about that anymore. One thing checked off my list of things to do this year. So without further ado, let's get into this week's video. So this weekend, I wanted to go and check out the new National Museum of Qatar. I had learned in the museum that it's not actually new, it was just undergoing renovation, that Qatar had a national museum in the past, but this one is, I guess, the rejuvenated version of the old one. So it recently opened a week or two ago, maybe three weeks ago, I don't remember exactly, but there are a bunch of people, like celebrities here for the grand opening, and it's something that I wanted to go check out, especially since it's still really new. So I planned to go check it out on Friday. It was supposed to open at, I think, 1.30 in the afternoon because Friday mornings in Qatar, if you don't already know, are everything is usually closed for prayers because those happen Friday morning around 11, 11.30 and they go till like a little bit afternoon. So things usually open after like 12.30 or 1 or so in the afternoon on Friday. So I was gonna go Friday at 1.30 when the museum opened, but I got lazy and distracted and I didn't end up going till like 4 p.m. about. So I got there and there was a lot of traffic to get into the parking lot, so I was a little bit nervous at first. And then I got in, I found a parking space. Luckily there was actually plenty of parking. And then went to go into the museum and <laughs> there was a huge line. The line was going all the way from the door to get in and it like curved around and then back and then came out of the museum and it was starting to go up the sidewalk on the side entrance like to the museum. So I got in line and I assumed like yeah I'd be waiting here for a while but it would like be moving and eventually I'd get in. I probably stood in line for like 20 or so minutes and I had moved quite a bit, but I was starting to think that like the only reason the line was moving was because the people in front of me were like getting out of line because they didn't want to wait anymore. <laughs> um, because the front of the line didn't really look like it was moving and I don't actually know what was going on. I didn't actually ever end up getting to the front of the line because after like 20 minutes I was just too impatient to wait anymore and I was just like, forget it, I'll come back tomorrow. Um, and then I just like walked around and looked at the museum from the outside because it's actually a really, really beautiful building. It's built, they say, to, uh, I guess, around uh, the figure of a desert rose, which I don't honestly really know what that is, but it's a really nice architecture, so it was nice to just walk around the outside, and there was a lot of people doing the same thing, taking pictures, blah, 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 because uh, they didn't want to wait in line probably either. <laughs> um, so I decided, since the National Museum was really busy, maybe I'd just go check out the Art Museum instead, because if everyone's here, then there's probably no one over there. So I drove over to the art museum after sitting in traffic for like 20 minutes at a red light, which took forever. And I finally got to the art museum and I was trying to find a parking space and there were literally no parking spaces because I didn't think about this. Yesterday was a really beautiful day outside, like a lot of people were out on the corniche and like the parks and stuff. And yeah, the Museum of Islamic Art also has like a really beautiful park that people like to hang out in. So I feel like a lot of people are parked there to go to the park, not the actual museum. So after driving around for another like 20 minutes, I gave up on that too and I was like, forget it, I'm just going home, I'll do this tomorrow. <laughs> so unfortunately I failed to attempt the first day, but uh, I was like, you know what, I live here obviously, so I'm just gonna come back tomorrow. A lot of times Qatar is really quiet in the morning, so hopefully there won't be a lot of people here. And yeah. So after a disappointing Friday attempt to see the museum, I decided this morning that I would go back in the morning when the museum opens at 9 a.m. because Qatar is really quiet in the morning normally and no one's awake. Also when I woke up this morning it was raining so that's another bonus for me trying to go to the museum because no one was going to be outside on the corniche or in the park because it's raining. I arrived at 9 o'clock in the morning just like I'd planned to, got a prime parking spot so even though it was raining I didn't have to walk that far. 
and then got to the museum I was like the second person in line like waited for them to open and then like walked right in and they had like a little problem with the door but once they figured that out they actually let us in the back way to get to the exhibit and was like the first group of people there there were like six like parties there I guess in the beginning and yeah I had pretty much an open viewing of the museum it wasn't crowded at all and people like started trickling in as the time went on but like I just took my time walking through so like they caught up and whatever but the museum itself was really really well done I thought the projections on the wall and like the actual like I guess replicas of like the animals and the tools and all the things that they had in there like from his historical guitar were really really well done and it was actually a really nice experience in the beginning and as you go through then they go into like the timeline of Qatar's history like the different battles that were fought and the British control and like everything that happened in Qatar's history so I learned quite a bit about how the country came to where it is now just by going through that section and then the they also had um uh, like a replica of the emir's home so it was it was outside which was unfortunate it was raining so you I kind of was like trying to like take cover <laughs> under the different parts of it but it had different little exhibits for like different rooms in his palace and yes that was a neat thing to check out too um and yeah then they have a gift shop obviously and I think they're supposed to have a cafe but it wasn't open when I was there um, but yeah it was a nice little experience some points I wish they had a little bit more details because they gave the basics of what was happening, the, ba the basic history of things, but I wanted to know like more and I think that will just come with time as they build up the exhibits that they have more and then also like the exhibit was called Qatar from like I don't know whatever long time back in history to 2030 and I feel like they only went up to really like 2013 and didn't cover like the future part which I thought they would I don't know bring up more with like vision 2030 I think is what it's called in the World Cup and all that kind of thing uh, they had a little part of it at the end of the timeline but not like a lot in the future which I mean obviously it's a museum so it's based on the past so you can't really expect that much about the future but I don't know I was looking forward to learning a little bit more about the vision for the future but I'm sure that they will build that up because there was a whole empty part like once um, once they develop it even more and get more exhibits in Overall, I really like the museum. I probably would go back once they have more, I guess, exhibits and more information there. I wouldn't go back to go through the thing again because obviously once you read everything like and nothing changes, like it's kind of boring to go back. But I'm hoping that they'll continue building it up and like in the future I'll be able to go back again and see some new things. Um, it was free for me because I'm a resident and then tourists are I think 50 reals and then they have discounts for like seniors or students or whatever else. Uh, but it's all on their website, which is really easy to follow. You can download a map there and everything. And I would call it a successful rainy Saturday morning. And if you are in Qatar or you live here, I would definitely recommend at least checking out the museum. Even if you're a tourist, like 50 reals is not a lot of money for a museum. And I think the projections and like all of the stuff that you see, it's a very modernized museum when you go there. And it's a good way to just get a brief introduction on the history of guitar and kind of like understand where certain things come from so I would recommend checking it out I enjoyed it and 
yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like below and let me know in the comment section what you thought. I try and make new videos about my life here in Qatar every Sunday, so if you're interested in keeping up with my journey and seeing what I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week. And with that, I will see you guys next week. Bye, guys!